okay now think about this one preload now understand this word pre means what is pre pre final before final examinations you have a final examination that is called as pre final pre means before load means contraction so before contraction whatever the load let load is there it is called as preload let us understand with respect to the ventricle now ventricles will undergo dilation during that ventricular dilation it will have 140 ml of blood is there now this 140 ml of blood will be will be putting some kind of pressure on this valve this blood whatever the blood is there it causes some stretch to this ventricular wall that stretch is known as preload let me put it in a different way take for the example a balloon you take a balloon fill water with it when you increase the water level what happens because of that water level balloon starts bulging up so what has happened the increased amount of water puts pressure on the walls of the balloon and it causes dilating that balloon similar thing what happens when more amount of blood is coming into the heart instead of 140 let's say you have 200 ml sir what happens with this 200 ml of blood all this blood will put pressure on this wall and the ventricular wall stretches this stretch is known as preload that means before contraction if the blood volume is more that will put pressure on this ventricular wall and that degree of pressure or degree of stretch on that ventricular wall is known as preload Now preload is very important factor. In normal healthy heart, 140 ml should be there. If 140 ml of blood is there inside this ventricle wall, ventricles can withstand that pressure. Instead of 140, if it is 200, more blood is here. Where do they go? They will put pressure on this ventricle wall. So like a balloon, when you increase more amount of water, what happens? Balloon bulges. Similarly, when more amount of blood gets there. it puts pressure on ventricle that is called as ventricular wall tension see ventricle are under constant pressure the the inside blood will be putting pressure on this ventricle walls if it continue to raise it will damage ventricular wall and that is given by pre load that means pre before contraction load what is the load on the heart that is putting pressure on this ventricle wall is known as pre load let me explain it again so usually whenever a ventricle dilates see contraction relaxation contraction relaxation it is a continuous cyclic thing so pre before contraction what do you have you have relaxation when ventricles are relaxed you have 140 ml of blood is there right and that 140 ml will put pressure on this ventricle walls instead of 140 if 200 is there what happens the pressure increases that pressure is known as preload the degree of stretch on the ventricle wall before contraction is known as preload if more amount of blood reaches to the heart instead of 140 we have 200 ml that puts pressure on the walls of heart that is technically known as preload pre means before contraction load what is the load on the heart before contraction what are the amount of the blood is there it creates a kind of load that load is called as preload now after this you have another word called as after load now to understand this let me ask you a question think about this and and uh, let me know you know we all we have a numerical values for blood pressure what do you say is blood pressure 120 by 80 120 is systolic pressure 80 is diastolic pressure it is measured from mm of hg 120 mm of hg during contraction 80 mm of hg during dilation where do you measure this pressure that 120 is measured where atria ventricle from where else or that 80 when heart is relaxing you have the pressure where do you measure that atria ventricle where do you measure that you know the measuring pass from aorta when ventricles contract blood will be coming into the aorta then the pressure will be 120 mm of hg when ventricle dilates the blood will not remain here it will be moving out to that circulation then the pressure falls down when ventricle dilates it will be around 80 mm of hg hence 120 we call it as systolic blood pressure 80 we call it as diastolic blood pressure let me repeat this again when ventricle contracts blood gets into aorta when more blood is coming into aorta the pressure increases 
that is called systolic pressure and that is 120 mm of pg when ventricle relaxes or our ventricle diastole is there the blood will be moved out of this aorta and that pressure is 80 mm of pg this is normal blood pressure what is hypertension when you call uh, a, a particular individual has got hypertension hypertension is anything greater than or equal to 140 by 90 mm of hg is known as hypertension systolic pressure if it becomes 140 diastolic pressure when it becomes 90 it is called as hypertension look at this systolic pressure is increased 20 units but diastolic pressure if you increase 10 units it becomes hypertension in fact diastolic pressure rise is very dangerous why think about this now see during contraction because blood is reaching there you will have increase in pressure that is on when diastole is there the blood will be moving out pressure falls down to 80 now even after diastole if the pressure is 90 here what happens so here increase in pressure is there now after that you have systole is there in the systole the blood has to move from ventricle to aorta if already 90 mm of hg pressure is there what happens it is it has got already increased pressure is there that creates pressure on this ventricle wall the ventricle must exert more pressure to pump the blood from here to aorta 80 is less you can pump the blood if it is 90 the stress will be here because already blood is there and you need to increase the pressure what if it is 100 even the pressure is increasing on the left ventricle so that is the reason why the lower part is very important only 10 units rise you call someone has got hypertension because that is indirectly putting pressure on left ventricle if sustained levels of increased pressure is there in aorta left ventricular failure occurs because all the pressure will be exerted on this ventricle walls that damages heart here comes the concept of afterload so afterload is the pressure that must be exerted by this left ventricle to pump the blood into aorta again after load the pressure that must be exerted by this ventricle to pump the blood from here to aorta that is depend upon this diastolic blood pressure if it is increased the the workload of the heart increases the damages ventricular walls so both of them preload afterload talks about the cardiac ventricular health understand again afterload is completely related to left ventricle whereas preload is related to right ventricle so before contraction what is the amount of blood it is in the right ventricle whereas when it contracts it has to pump the blood to aorta that is related to afterload understand this thing let me again let me explain it again so the normal blood pressure is 120 by 80 we call 120 is systolic blood pressure 80 we call it as diastolic blood pressure where do you measure we measure in this iot when ventricle contracts blood reaches here the pressure is raised when you measure the pressure it will be 120 mm of pressure when ventricle dilates and ventricle relaxes blood will be moving out and the pressure will be 80 mm of pressure what is hypertension anything greater than or equal to 140 by 90 mm of hg systolic pressure is raised to 20 units but diastolic rising 10 units will cause hypertension remember diastolic pressure is very dangerous why it is directly affecting left ventricular function if the pressure is more here the ventricle has to contract more rigorously to pump the blood to this aorta if it is 80 okay it can send it the ventricular wall tension is in a 90 difficulty 100 even more difficulty what is happening it is increasing the pressure on ventricular wall briefly it is called as ventricular wall tension increasing ventricular wall tension now remember my dear friends these four words are very important whenever you read about any cardiovascular disease you you see this words keep coming all the time cardiac output stroke volume preload after that let let me explain it again briefly cardiac output the amount of blood comes out of the heart per minute it is 5 liters how it is calculated it is calculated by stroke volume multiplied with heart rate see cardiac output totally how many beats are there per minute it is 
with every day how much amount comes is given by stroke value. 70 into 70, 4,900 milliliters are approximately equal to five liters. This is very important because think about whenever you have anxiety, whenever you have increase in heart rate, think about this. Instead of five liters, your heart has to pump seven, ten, fifteen liters when heart rate is increased, and that damages cardiac function. After that, preload, before contraction, whatever the blood amount is there, that puts pressure on ventricular wall. Instead of 140 ml, if, if there are, there is 200 ml, that causes ventricular wall tension, and that damages ventricular walls. Afterload, afterload is related to hypertension. Like aorta, when aortal pressure is increased, the ventricle need to forcefully contract so that the blood goes there. That damages ventricular wall. So these four words are very important: cardiac output, stroke volume, preload, and afterload.